at least I'm really close to getting to three, uh, which doesn't explicitly show uh, hidden areas on the map, but it makes it so that when you walk by them, uh, they uh, appear translucent instead of opaque, uh, which lets you see them, which is one of those abilities that say if you're playing Donkey Kong Country would be exceptionally uh, useful <laughs> if all the secret areas would appear translucent instead of opaque for until you get near them. Actually, I have an idea of where to go. Let me do, 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 do. Go over here. Because I, if I remember right, there is a hidden orb at the top here. And with all the weird sequence breaky things I did in this area, uh, did I get this orb over here? Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if I would have done things in a specific way, there might have been rocks still falling down in this corridor just because. Uh, anyway, why don't we head on back over to Blackroot? Did I pick up a map stone at any point? No, I didn't. Eh, let's not head back to Blackroot. I kind of want to get a map stone first. I will. I'll head to Thornfelt Swamp then, actually. <laughs> charge dash into him. <laughs> Sometimes I forget charge dash. It's it's a hoping attack. There we go. So. But yeah, you had the opportunity to actually see some of these con conferences, uh, Higsby. So was there like any that was like, uh, this really stood out to me? Or was it just uh, Nintendo 1 because Metroid? <laughs> well, not necessarily just because Metroid. I mean, I did really enjoy, obviously, seeing what Nintendo had to offer. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, I mean, you already said that, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you haven't had time to play Woolly World. But what mm -hmm. did you think of the new Yoshi game that they showed, which definitely gives a lot more Yoshi story vibes, while the Yoshi we've seen as of late has definitely had more Yoshi's Island vibes? Uh, reserving judgment, but uh, I need to find out if it's being made by Arzen or not. If not, then we'll see. Uh, but if it is, I'm very, very skeptical already. Hmm. <laughs> so, if you guys don't know, RZN uh, used to be called r and I guess I'm going to enable the lasers and play this cutscene because why not? Uh, let, let's live with more death on the line, you know? Uh, they, they were the company who originally made Yoshi's Island DS and then oh. new Yoshi's Island on the 3DS. And I've always argued Yoshi's Island DS, no, it's not, you know, the most fantastic of games, but uh, I personally thought, you know, it was a fine, okay game. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, they basically made a, a Yoshi Island game that I literally couldn't complete. I tried to, I couldn't. I could not. I think I stopped right in the middle of like World 4. Just I couldn't play it anymore. Hmm. So it's another one of those moments where I questioned myself, am I getting too old for video games? And in that case, no. Uh, the team at RZN just don't know level design. That They had, you know, a fine engine with the Yoshi's Island engine and they just... Well, frankly, stink at level design. And, and uh, if I recall correctly, that game had gimmicks of, you know, becoming or throwing big Yoshi eggs and, uh, you know, doing areas where you transform into another thing, but then you're under a timer. And uh, they were, like, really basic, and it felt like, you know, this feels like it was made for a three year old. <laughs> You know, I can understand, you know, making a game not difficult. I, I believe Kirby games attest to that very, very well. You can make a game not difficult and fun, but in the case of the you know, new Yoshi's Island for the 3DS, it went way too far that it was boring, so. All right, so normally I'm supposed to complete the, uh, uh, what's the name of the area again? The uh, I'm just gonna go over it. It's over here, way on the left side of the map. Uh, the forlorn ruins to make some wind appear here um, but currently there's not any wind so I'm kind of curious if I could do a uh, rocket jump here to take care of this area as Guma's just gonna hang here for until <laughs> for until this cutscene triggers all right uh, okay all right bring you I need you a little bit into the oh you can't go into there I'm gonna get one of the fishes okay and as much health as possible. All right, here we go. So let's go get one of the fishes. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> wow. All right, get the fish on land. Get the fish in the air. There we go. Oh, come on, I'm running low on health. Uh, okay, I might as well just go kill myself to reheal. And am I remembering there. right in that there was a new Fire Emblem announcement? Oh yes, th there was. I believe it was basically a Dynasty Warriors X Fire Emblem mm. game, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Which, uh, 
Well, even though I was kind of excited for Hyrule Warriors, I never picked it up, so I don't see myself becoming excited for this game, but it'll be fun to watch, so... Oh, yeah, Fire Emblem has really become one of Nintendo's, you know, driving series, considering... It's funny, like a decade ago, well actually that's more like 15 years ago now, I guess, since Smash Brothers 2. That theory, you know, they were just testing the waters in North America by putting Marth and Roy into Smash Brothers, and then just like, boom, they've taken off now, and people go nuts over Fire Emblem, so... Mm. so I think that's really funny. I mean, yeah, and I mean, that's after the fact that, you know, Fire Emblem Awakening was, you know, the Fire Emblem series' last chance. They were going to end uh, the series after that game if it didn't sell well enough, and, well, look, it sold really, really good. Uh, I actually have to hand it to Nintendo, or not well, Nintendo, Intelligent Systems is the one who made Fire Emblem Awakening and Fates. Uh, that's a damn good game, so. Very good. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. That was actually a very good rocket jump, because now I can get this without the wind. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to do that whole time. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff underwater here, and with the poisoned water, even though I have lots of health, I have to wonder how much of it is uh, worth my time getting now. I'm going to try to get it all, just because I can. You know, screw the poisoned water. I'm going to swim through all of it. <laughs> so, uh, oh shoot, I have to actually open this gate first before I can do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've picked up uh, Fire Emblem Awakening and uh, Fates along with uh, all of its versions, although I have not picked up the remake of Fire Emblem 2, uh, mainly because Fire Emblem Fates probably took way too much time out of my life. Same thing with Fire Emblem Awakening, and I'm like, I'm not ready to do this again, and it feels like uh, the Fire Emblem Heroes uh, game came out pretty quickly after Fates, so... Yeah, they're definitely... Too quick. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely noticed that. It's like fallen into the new Super Mario Brothers cycle <laughs> where they're just pumping them out too many new games I think there's an argument to be made here that you know you release too many games of a series and just some people like myself can't keep up so we don't play some of the games mm -hmm. so I'd actually have to take a look at how well Call of Duty is selling but like I stopped playing Call of Duty after Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare uh, and it was about at that point that they basically turned it into uh, the Madden of first-person shooters where there's a new one out every it's year. It's really funny because, yeah, I definitely noticed that around when Modern Warfare 2 came out that everybody was going nuts over it. And then, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. after that it was a new one every single year. <laughs> I remember I used to go nuts over Professor Layton every single year and I definitely really miss you know, when I could look forward to that. Because that was pretty much like my game of the year. When it came out, everything got put on the back burner and I would just play it almost non-stop until beating it. Which would really only consume like, you know, a week of my time. But it was fun doing that each year. But there hasn't been a new Professor Layton game in quite a while. Alright, let's see how much of this area I can do. Can I get to the bottom of the lake while it's poisoned is going to be my question, because if I can, I can do this area without purifying the water. Alrighty, does that little corridor count? It does count for map completion. Alright, let's go up here then, and then try to get to some land without running into spikes and hurting Ori some more. Oh god, there's land over here. Can I make it to the land? Nope. Don't run into the spikes. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, there might be some people who are like being like, Miles, Luigi, go actually complete the Ginso tree so you don't have to deal with this. But I'm like, I'm, I'm stubborn and I want to do this the stubborn way. Oh gosh, I'm going to run into the exact same issue, aren't I? Wait, no, I made it. Uh, the only problem is now I have to save a whole bunch <laughs> to recover health. I have plenty of blue energy, especially since I just leveled up. Matter of fact, why don't I uh, pick that up and pick that up. There we go. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> I'm going to need to heal a little bit here. Uh, you may want to skip ahead a minute in the video, guys. <laughs> Watch, we end up talking about like the most important thing. There we go. Now let's go back into this, hopefully without running into spikes, because that has actually hurt a bunch, and I need to quit doing that. Does that little pocket count as map to complete? Hopefully it doesn't, because that would waste time to go up there. There we go. 
But yeah, uh, I will definitely say Fire Emblem Awakening and Fire Emblem Fates were like, you know, super addictive games to me and I played through them multiple times in multiple ways and uh, had fun doing that, especially since both games kind of have the, you know, you can make, you know, the child units and whatnot and I might have, oh, no, I did not get crushed, all right. And, uh, you know, I always enjoy, you know, pairing up the different characters differently. I am crushed. <laughs> uh, that was a bad timing. I am being impatient. I was like, I need to get through here now. And, oh, wait, no. Crushers kill me faster than the poisonous water. All right. Uh, that was bad timing. All right. There we go. But, uh, yeah, other than, well, maybe it's a some degree Ori, because as I mentioned, I've played through this game at least at this point over a dozen times. I can't think of a, a game that's just made me really addicted to it as of late otherwise. Uh, maybe a little bit of Breath of the Wild, uh, but in Breath of the Wild's case, I've only played through it once, but can you blame me with how big the game is? <laughs> no, it's it's really fantastic. No, I don't blame you at all. Mm -hmm. Like this, it, It's massive, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes it is. Anyway, this whole area, oh geez, why did my camera snap over there? Now I have to find where I am again. All right, so I have that little area there, but otherwise I have uncovered the map. All right, so and now that I have all the uh, map abilities, let me zoom out just a little bit here to see what I can see. Oh, is that what I'm missing in Sunken Glades? That little thing, or is that still Hollow Grove? <laughs> Damn you, map! <laughs> Damn you. Uh, let, we'll worry about it later, because we're pretty far away from Sunken Glades at the moment. Anyway, heal one more time, and let's get swimming. Oh god, I have to wait for the crusher. But yeah, uh, once the first DLC pack for Breath of the Wild comes out, I did plan on doing a, uh, a master mode playthrough, but uh, uh, that would probably be about it for you know me playing Breath of the Wild. I still haven't played through it all the way. I did try it with you, though, and it was mm -hmm. really fantastic what I played. So it's, still, it's neat to see that it's still getting more DLC, but maybe, maybe it's worth waiting for like the, you know, game of the year edition, even if it's not game of the year. What do they call it? Like the complete edition, the Hyrule edition. The complete edition? <laughs> the edition that already has the DLC, the like Ma Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? <laughs> the totally wild edition, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I totally picked up Mario Kart 8 Deluxe thinking that I was going to play this online, and I played it for, you know, a couple hours, but I haven't gotten the motivation to go play it online. Like I did with Mario Kart 8. I suppose that's because it's the same Mario Kart game. Hmm. Alright, there's land up here, right? Okay, thank goodness, because I need I need to heal again. Uh-oh. Don't tell me I can't create a soul link near enemies. Uh, I need room to make another soul link, so hopefully this is enough room. But yeah, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'm like, I rebought Mario Kart 8, essentially, and uh, yeah. Maybe I should go play it online before there's the paid service for Nintendo Online. <laughs> Just no motivation to do that. There we go, and I actually got a map stone here, so I can go back to uh, Blackroot, put in that map stone. Maybe that'll help me see what I'm missing there. Uh, don't run into the spikes. Alright, there we go. There we go. Did I get this area here? Oh, that's the area that I sequence broke into this area through. Ah, okay. Hurry up. Alright, there we go. There we go. This is like the area of the game that has the most water, so no more messing with water for until I run into another area of water. Uh, Thornfelt Swamp is a lot of water, though. There we go. Yeah, let's uh, head back to Moon Grotto slash black root here get that map stone put in and then see if we can figure out our 99 percent conundrum uh, oh, does the struggle ever end with 99 percent feel like deja vu <laughs> it, it's like we once streamed this once before yeah. matter of fact why don't i show something that i haven't showed off here uh we're just gonna restart the game i believe the code is left up right down up 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 a eh? i forgot the code there's a code you can put in that when you start the game, if you put it in, um, it changes Ori's color. Oh. Huh. To what? Yeah. Uh, it's a random color, actually. Oh, really? And can you keep entering uh -huh. it to get the color to get a color that you like? Yeah. Up oh, there we go. Now it worked. Now Ori's yellow. Yellow Ori. <laughs> 
But yeah, it, it actually just chooses a color at random. And uh, from what I've been told, this uh, secret code uh, was actually discovered, or not discovered, was told uh, during a GDQ mm -hmm. event. Uh, where apparently at the time they were having an interview with one of the developers at Moon Studio and right after the run, the developer at Moon Studio is like, you want to learn something cool and told everyone the code then. So. See, I would totally do that. If I ever developed a game, I would put just li like neat little Easter eggs in and probably like throw them out in random places. <laughs> See if like hmm. 20 years later anybody found them. <laughs> kind of like that guy who put his initials in that... Uh... Um, uh, one Atari game because at the time you weren't allowed to like credit your own games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, like, there's, there's guys... always been times too, like where you press like a certain you know combination on the title screen and then like the credits show up. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, like one of the variants of a uh, Donkey Kong for the Atari, there's like this really really obscure set of things you could do. That uh, if you do, it'll show the creator's initials on the title screen, and people didn't find out about it until like over 20 years later. <laughs> and evidently, it was done because uh, at the time, if you made an Atari game, it was quote unquote owned by Atari, and uh, you weren't allowed to claim credit for it, which, uh, well, sounds dumb if you ask me. You should get credit if you make a game. Absolutely. You know? well, I mean,. It's not like half the games even went through Atari anyway. People could pump out anything. <laughs> Just get it to work with Atari. So, yeah, the whole yeah, bad. whole Atari situation is pretty interesting. I remember there's also one case. It's on the cutting room floor, and exactly what game it was is slipping my mind. But when the game was looked inside, like inside of the code and everything, they actually found a whole bunch of personal information that one of the developers had left there, including their social security number. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, why would you do that? Yeah, so here we are, 20 years later, people ripping open games. It's like, oh, here's this guy's sin. Uh, let's go commit credit card theft. <laughs> uh, man. Y you know, I recently watched a CPG Grey video all about uh, United States Social Security numbers and cards, and it is like, you know, this was a number set up for the Social Security program, and it was not meant to be an identifying number, but, like, agencies didn't have any other, like, national identity number to go off of, so it was like, oh, let's just use this, mm. even though it wasn't set up to do that, and, and people originally in the Social Security Administration like, don't use it for this, it's not for this very, oh, well, there's nothing else to use, so, mm -hmm. yeah, fun, fun story, fun video to watch, actually, <laughs> uh, shoot, these crushers, I gotta wait for these crushers. There we go. But I do know uh, with the colored Ori, I forgot if it's like a mod you have to install or whatnot, but I've seen some people, I'm so oh. dead. Uh, I've seen some people speedrunning Ori uh, use a mod that makes Ori flash rainbow colors. Oh. <laughs> just, just change the color of Ori. Uh, I don't know exactly how the game is programmed, but I think it's safe to say it's programmed in some way to, I guess, make Ori's color easy to change because he's normally white. So yeah. Uh, anyway, I am going to have to wait to heal again. Thankfully, there was a little health point right there anyway, and an ability cell. So uh, that, we have our first 100%. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> Black hurts 100%. And unfortunately, it was a secret underwater that I have to swim forever for, so I have to heal up again. Uh. But yeah, I should look up more into that so I can have Rainbow Ori next time I play the game. What other kinds of mods are there? Uh, I mean, obviously I know that there are mods that will automatically keep track of splits for you for speedrunning. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure what else exists. I'm not sure what the great Ori and the Blind Forest modding community is doing because this game isn't quite like Super Mario World in terms of its modding, so... I don't think anything's like Super Mario World. Well, I guess maybe there's like, you know, Gmod. <laughs> but I think Super Mario World's pretty high up there and like how intensely it's mm -hmm. been torn apart and reconstructed. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, seen the uh, jailbreak videos for Super Mario I World? I have. And it's like you can install this in your game too if you have like four controllers and staple them together and clamp them down and... Yeah, it, it can it can be done with a Game Shark now instead. Really? 
yes. There's a video that uh, Seth Bling did where instead of, you know, having the multi-controller port and whatnot, uh, it's possible to use a Game Shark, uh, put in some codes, uh, basically kind of create a, a bootloader using the Game Shark, and then you don't need to do the super crazy setup. You will still have to do like 20 minutes of crazy jump in the precise position thing. <laughs> yeah, that takes forever. Game mm -hmm. Shark or Game oh, Genie? I, just, uh, I think it was Game Shark. Uh, I, I always forget because what's the difference between Game Shark and Game Genie? Um, it was different company, because okay. yeah, I don't. I, I didn't even I, think there was a Game Shark for Super Nintendo. I thought Game Shark was something that showed up in Nintendo 64 PlayStation days. Fair point. I just realized I have 100% now in Sunken Glades, Lost Grove, Black Root, and Moon Grotto. How does that work? <laughs> Like, uh, uh, okay. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go complete Thornfelt. 